If you watch enough horror movies, you will eventually discover lessons that you can apply no matter where life takes you. Number one, do not ever go camping unless you want to end up with a machete through your head. Number two, don't even visit property that's built on top of an old cemetery. And number three, children are evil. Weird slash bad slash demonic kids are experiencing something of a renaissance in horror with high profile scare flicks like The Babadook and Goodnight Mommy. But the roots of the evil child subgenre stretch back decades. The earliest iconic example is 1956's The Bad Seed, in which a child named Rhoda hides her homicidal tendencies behind pigtails and a pinafore. Promise me you won't tell anyone what you've told me, do you understand? Why would I tell and get killed? It's the perfect crime from the perfect vessel whom no one would suspect, but everyone clearly should. Don't trust kids. They're id-driven monsters with obsessions capable of pushing them over the edge. Get me back my shoes! I got nobody's shoes, don't you know what anybody's teasing you? Will you bring them back? With your puzzle. I've got no shoes, I keep telling you. Will you bring them back? I believe you did it. I was fooling before, but now I believe you kill him. The Bad Seed's influence reverberated through culture for years after. You could detect it in 1976's Alice Sweet Alice, in which a 12-year-old is accused of murdering her 9-year-old sister, played by Brooke Shields, during her first Holy Communion. <laughs> If there's anything scarier than a killer kid, it's a killer Catholic kid. Then there was The Good Son, a 1993 domestic thriller famous for its climax in which a sort of Sophie's Choice plays out on the side of a cliff. At the time, the role of a sociopath was considered a departure for its star Macaulay Culkin, who had recently warmed his way into America's heart as Kevin McAllister in the Home Alone movies. What many failed to realize was that Kevin was already sadistic as it was, and the abuse he put his potential robbers through was essentially a precursor to the kind of torture porn we'd see a few decades later in the Saw movies. And then there's the hilarious orphan from 2009. No spoilers, but this kid is wise beyond her years. Or maybe she's years beyond her wisdom. When grown-ups love each other very, very much, they want to show each other that love. They want to express it. I know. They fuck. And of course, far worse than one big monster are several little monsters, and worse than several little monsters are several little kids. There's 1960's Village of the Damned and its 1995 remake in which a legion of psychically connected Aryan-looking kids takes over a village. In the end, the adults can only defeat them with a time bomb hidden through sheer mental willpower. In the 1976 Spanish flick, Who Can Kill a Child, a couple of adults find themselves on an island inhabited by kids who are turned murderous by mere eye contact with other killer kids. It's sort of like if the kids in Lord of the Flies stranded themselves on purpose. And then there's the horrifying 1984 Stephen King adaptation, Children of the Corn, and its considerably less horrifying string of sequels. In the original, a cult of Amish-esque children sacrifice the adults in a fictional Nebraska town under the guidance of a prophet named Isaac. This ensures there is both corn and weird kids as far as the eye can see. Really good voice work in this one. He wants you too, Malachi. He wants you too. Many of the kids we see in horror, as in life, can't help that they're evil. Among the most helpless are those who are possessed by the devil, like Reagan in The Exorcist. As much as it must suck to have the devil inside you, it's probably a lot of fun to be allowed to use such graphic language as a 12-year-old. Stick your cock up her ass, you motherfucking worthless cocksucker! Be silent! Oh. A more recent example of child possession is 2010's Insidious, in which a child's body is essentially a gateway to evil. It's a good horror movie and an even better parable for what Hollywood does to its young stars. Sometimes kids aren't just devils, they are the devil. Take Damien in The Omen. And then there's the recent highly entertaining example of Cooties, in which a batch of bad meat turns kids into rabid zombies with a taste for human flesh. It all goes down at an elementary school where even the non-infected kids are jerks. Cooties reminds us that bad kid horror movies come from a very primal fear of our offspring turning against us, a fear of our future leaving us in the past in the most gruesome and literal way possible, murder. But it also exposes the great catharsis in having an excuse to turn against that offspring. Seems like a great deal of fun in the end. Did we miss any? What's your favorite scary kid movie? Tell us in the comments and subscribe to Gawker for more original videos.